it is evident that there are problems involved with conventional energy sources, so we need to consider alternatives. Some of these are wind, hydropower, and geothermal power. Let's consider some of these. Today, most of our energy is generated using fossil fuel sources. Alternative fuels are not used very much. The reason is that it's more expensive today for uh, use of them. But this may not be in the future. As fossil fuel gets more scarce, the cost is going to go up. And also, we are concerned with the environmental damage that its use may cause. Here we see the distribution of energy sources. Renewable energy only accounts for 7% of the total. And of this, uh, hydroelectric, wind, and geothermal are only about 3 or 4%. In countries like the Netherlands and in farm communities, windmills were an important source of power. These old-fashioned windmills are now being replaced by a modern generation machine, the wind turbine. Wind power really originates from the sun, which heats the atmosphere unevenly. The hotter air expands and becomes less dense and rises, and it gets replaced by air coming from cooler regions, which is less dense. This movement of the air produces wind. Here we see an array of such wind turbines forming what is often referred to as a wind farm. And uh, in places we see large numbers of these. These are effective in regions where winds are strong and consistent, like in the Texas Plains and in areas near the sea. They're not good everywhere. Another source of energy is hydropower, power derived from falling water. Here we see a picture of Niagara Falls, and it's evident to anyone watching this that this stream of falling water represents a great deal of energy. This energy of the water may be captured. It requires a stream of flowing water, usually resulting when water falls from a higher level to a lower one. This energy, again, is derived from the sun, which causes evaporation of water, which then comes down in the form of rain, sometimes falling in reservoirs at higher levels from which it flows down to a lower level and releases the energy. This flowing water can be led to a turbine, causing it to rotate, which can then drive it generated to produce electricity. The reservoir of water at this higher level can be maintained through use of a dam. Here we see some details of the construction of the turbine and its associated generator. Large hydroelectric installations and dams are becoming less favorable because of their unfavorable uh, ecological impact arising from impounding water and preventing its natural flow. Now technology makes possible the development of smaller installations replacing the water wheels that used to drive grain mills and lumber mills in the old days. While these don't generate much power individually, there are many possible locations for them, so their cumulative effect on the energy supply can be great. In some locations where tidal flow is great, the movement of the water can also produce power. In this case, the power is originating from the moon, which causes the tides. Uh, this is done, for example, in Nova Scotia, where the Bay of Fundy has great tidal flow. Let's now talk about geothermal power. Here is a diagram of the interior of the Earth, which is believed to have been formed at one time from hot magna, which is gradually cooled over the years, but it is still hotter at the center and becomes cooler as one produce, moves out to the exterior. Thus, we can get heat from the interior of the Earth. There are some regions where these hot regions are close to the surface and readily accessible. And with modern technology, we're learning how to probe more deeply. Here we see a diagram showing how we can obtain energy from such regions deep within the Earth. In some countries like Iceland, this is a major source of energy. 
The number of places where the heated areas are close enough to the surface is limited. Here we see a map of North America where the red regions are those where this may be possible. As you can see, they're principally located in the western part of the country. While there are limited regions where, where this type of geothermal power is possible, there are opportunities for wider application using a device called a heat pump. We know that heat by itself will flow from something which is hot to something which is cold, but it won't go by itself in the reverse direction from the cold object to the hot. But this is just what happens in a refrigerator. The energy from inside the refrigerator where the temperature is low moves to outside the refrigerator where it is warmer, but it takes a motor in the refrigerator to make it do so. This is the principle by which a heat pump operates. It pumps energy from out of doors where it is cold to inside the house which is warmer. And it has the ability to move a great deal of energy using much less energy than what is moved. So it's an efficient way to uh, heat. And it's usable in warmer climates where the temperature outside is not too low. But even in our neighboring town of Leverett, Massachusetts, it is effectively used for heating the town library. Thus we see there are a number of interesting alternative energy sources. These are not a big deal at present, using, uh, producing only about 3% of the energy, but the technology for all of these is improving and the cost of conventional energy is going up. So I can see them growing and perhaps becoming as much as 10 to 15% of our energy source in the future.